make sure I know how to use this thing. All right, so I'm Dr. Robin, for those of you who don't know. I am a former competitive beach volleyball player and it turned psychologist with continuing education and nutrition. Along with my husband, Russ, we have started the Whole Food Muscle Club and written the book, How to Feed a Human the Whole Food Muscle Way. And today I would like to talk to you a little bit about something that I get said, get said to me pretty often when I talk to people about going plant-based. They say, nope, not that one, this way. Um, I know being plant-based is ideal. So they see all the data, they understand the science, they know that being plant-based is ideal, and then they say, but I don't like vegetables. And then they think, so they can't be plant-based. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about why people don't like vegetables, and if you are in that camp or someone you love is in that camp, what you can do about it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the psychology today. So the first thing that you need to know is that humans are designed <laughs> Humans are designed to eat to avoid famine. So we're designed to gain weight, we're designed to hold weight, we're designed to recognize when calories get scarce and hang on to that. And so what we've done is we've created a, a place where all the food is always available all of the time. There's never any famine, but we still eat like there's gonna be a famine. And so a lot of times I ask my clients, when was the last time you experienced a famine? and no one I've met yet has ever experienced a famine. Now, if I worked in Africa, I might meet someone who experienced a famine, but here in the United States and in the Western world in general, no one experiences a famine, so we have to start eating differently. So the, the other thing we have to know is that your brain is fundamentally designed to recognize healthy food. It's able to see food that is uh, bright colors, you have tri-vision, so you can see bright colors. The brighter the color, the more antioxidants, the healthier it is for you. The brighter the colors, the more calories there in it, is in it, the better it is for you. And that has worked really well for humans for a really long time, except now, recognize those colors? So those colors tell your subconscious brain, this is healthy food, eat this. This is good for you, eat this. And the industry has done this amazing thing. How many of you have heard of the bliss point? How many of you know what the bliss point is? So a few of you. So the industry has spent, when I say the industry, I mean the food industry. They've spent millions of dollars to find the bliss point. And the bliss point is the place that you're in your brain, in your taste buds, where salt, sugar, and fat combine to say, yes, eat more of that. That is good. That is gonna make you live through the next famine eat more of that, and while you're at it, remember where this food is. And that was really good when we had to remember where the fruit tree was every year when the fruit came in season so we could go find it, so we could eat that fruit. Unfortunately for us, it's not so great because you remember where the McDonald's is. It's not a great option. Now, have you ever fed a baby something that they really, really like? You know that face they make? That face where they go, hmm. Adults make that same face just a little less uh, intensely when they eat something that is the, that balance of salt, sugar, and fat. But interestingly, when you eat a dessert, that first bite is that mmm, but then you keep eating it because it's just there. And that bliss point also turns on something called your cram instinct. Your cram instinct is the other thing that keeps us from dying of famine. If you find calorie-rich foods that hit that bliss point, you eat more of it than your stomach can really handle, which is why you eat that first bite of dessert, it hits that bliss point, and then you eat the whole entire thing, even though after that, it's not as enjoyable anymore. So you hit that, that cram point, and that's really good for the food industry's bottom line. It's really bad for your waistline. The other thing that we end up with with the bliss point is that food has a certain level of enjoyment. So I wanna talk about that just really quickly. If you look here, the bottom, if you put mold in your mouth, there is zero enjoyment. You're, you do not like that, you spit that out. That is your body's ability to say, that is not healthy, do not ingest that. So mold is really bad. Now, for humans, as we've come through uh, history, prior to the industrial food revolution, you know, you would eat starch, and starch was pretty good. That's pretty average, yeah, potatoes, sweet potatoes, we like those, those are yummy. Um, you put on some vegetables, like your aromatics, your garlics, your onions, your peppers. Those are pretty good. Yeah, we like those too. 
Um, fruit, that's even better. Fruit is sweet. We like that a lot. And then up near the top, we've got your nuts, which have a lot of fat in them. Now, the thing that you'll notice about these, those foods don't have fat, sugar, and salt all in the same place. They're individual nutrients that you get from individual places. But when you add processed food, which has fat, sugar, and salt all in one place, oh, honey, I forgot honey. So sweet, we all like sweet, very high. And then processed food, off the chart, really good for you. As far as your taste buds and your brain thinks, your brain's like, yes, high calorie, eat lots of that. So that's fine if you only do that maybe Thanksgiving, that's the only time you eat that kind of food, fine. But if you're eating this way consistently, where you're eating with your um, up off of the enjoyment chart all the way at the top to the pleasure off the charts, what happens is your body calibrates to that and it pushes everything down. And so now the processed food becomes kind of average, middle of the road, it's what you expect. Your brain says, yep, that's what I need to eat. But the healthy foods, you see them, they get pushed down and that's where people say, I don't like vegetables. It's because their taste buds have become acclimated to the processed food and the fat and the sugar and the salt that the industry has put in it. So your taste buds no longer recognize what's real food and what's not real food. And it, um, some of you may have heard of uh, Dr. Lyle. He wrote a book called The Pleasure Trap. That's the pleasure trap. That's where you, you get stuck in that spot where your body says, this is normal, processed food is normal, and healthy food, real whole food, doesn't taste good, I don't like it. Now, the easy thing that people say is, well, just stop eating it. Well, it doesn't work that easily, and the reason it doesn't work that easily is because there's all these factors that get in your way. Now, how many of you, when you've you know, tried to change the way that eat, you eat, you do really well, breakfast, lunch, your afternoon snack, you may even do well through dinner, but then come 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, suddenly, you're binge eating. You know, well, you know, I, have, I have one client who binge eats on cake batter. That's her, her thing. Like She likes to eat cake batter at night. So whatever your, your thing is, maybe yours is chips, maybe it's cookies, where you get the whole package and you eat the whole thing. You think you're going to have one and you eat the whole thing. That's the bliss point and your cram instinct turning on. So it's not as easy as just saying, don't do it. So there's a couple of different things that can be your success saboteurs, and I don't have time to talk about all of these in detail, but I wanted to show them to you. Um, trying to eat in moderation, because you can't fight against that cram instinct. So you can't, kinda, you can't do moderation. Um, you, you end up with this place where food that the food company has created tastes better than real food. So for example, watermelon candy is more watermelony than watermelon. So you can't do that in moderation, it doesn't work. There's the fear of carbohydrates. Dr. Donahue mentioned that a little bit ago. People are scared of carbs. People trying to portion control or calorie count. There's willpower fatigue. The distraction addiction, which is we do everything except pay attention to what we're eating. You know, you drive and you eat, you look at your phone and you eat, you watch TV and you eat. Distraction. And then other sabotage is the people in your life who love you into failure. Because in our country, Food is considered love. You know, some, what do we give people for Valentine's Day? Right? So food is considered love. And so when you try to change to this healthy way of eating, you have people who love you into failure. But I want to talk specifically about willpower fatigue because that is one that people, everyone pretty much deals with. And that is that evening where you suddenly feel like, okay, I was doing well and now I'm not. So what is willpower fatigue? Everyone has a certain amount of willpower in their life. Daily basis, however much, however you want to measure it, a bucket full of willpower. Everything you do to be a healthy, normal, cons considerate human takes willpower. Someone tailgates you. It takes willpower to not slam on the brakes, get out and yell at them. Hey, don't tailgate me. So you're, you get an email at the office. You write a nasty email and then you delete it. That takes willpower. Your kid calls you because they forgot their lunch and you have to go drive it over there and you want to scream at them, but you don't. That takes willpower. The donuts show up in your office. The pizza shows up in your office. All of these things take willpower. And then by the end of the night, you have no more willpower left. You're just exhausted and you're done and you can't. And so what, what I'm going to try and show you is a couple of ways that you can not use your little bit of willpower you have toward food. So when people talk about food, they usually say, 
I can't eat that, I don't eat that, or I won't eat that. Those, and those are very willpower-driven concepts. I don't, I won't, I can't. And they make you feel deprived, they make you feel unhappy, and they make you feel like other people have um, a better life than you do because you've got these I can't, I don't, I won't. So instead, what I would encourage you to do is to say, right now I choose not to. Because that doesn't create that negative pushback, oh, I can't do that. Because there's a part of your brain, and I know I call my, that part of my brain Harriet. I gave her a name so I can tell her to shut up. She says to me, yes, I can. So if I say, well, right now I choose not to. Yes, I could, but right now I choose not to. That's going to help you not use your little bit of willpower toward food-related things. So whole foods are not addicting. Processed foods are addicting. So how do you tell the difference between I'm hungry, because that's another part Harriet likes to tell me. Oh, but I'm hungry. OK, Harriet, eat an apple. I don't want an apple. Then you're not hungry. That's not the problem here. So you have to recognize that if, if at the end of the night your brain is saying, oh, I'm hungry and I need chips, you never need chips. It's not the way that works. So I want you to stop dieting, because that, that is that I can't, I won't, I don't, is dieting, and start eating instead, because you're going to feel better. You're going to not have to starve yourself. You're not going to have to count carbs or cut carbs or count micros or count protein or any of that stuff. You're just going to eat real food, and you're going to feel so much better. So enjoy the journey. That is our website. And if you like, we have books in the back for later.